From a pure design perspective, one of the outstanding achievements of Beyond Borders was the Ethiopian refugee camp, stretching for miles and created from scratch in the Namibian desert. Welcome to our refugee camp in uh, Namibia. Uh, this is part of our, our movie Beyond Borders. This is a, a fantastic location, as you can see. And we've built an amazing set designed by um, uh, Wolf Kroger. What he gives the director, in this case Martin, is the ability to shoot 360 degrees plus aerial uh, with no visual effects required, no digital matte painting. You can just go for it. You can shoot everywhere there's a great shot, everywhere there's a great angle. And that's the art of a great uh, production designer. But we started with nothing here. There was not a thing here, just a mountain and desert. And so we had to build a road that's about eight kilometers in. We had to put electricity, generators in, water, sewerage. The set is very authentic. It's a mixture of a number of camps. It doesn't look exactly like what one camp or another, but it's a mixture. The mosque behind us, uh, the, the church, the buildings, the ladder, the tents, is all authentic, but we've taken elements from different camps uh, around uh, Ethiopia. You know, when I first came and saw the set, I couldn't believe it. It was really, truly overwhelming. Just as they built an entire city here, you know. It's, I spent a couple of days just alone on the set in my office, walking around the camp, getting to know it. And it's just, it's as complex and interesting and, uh, how you doing? Um, as, as a real camp. It's incredible. So even without all the add-ons they're going to do the computer imagery, you could see you could already put a hell of a lot of people in here. Oh, yeah. Good Just the setting as well, it looks it's amazing. Beautiful place, isn't it? Amazing. Well, this man, Nick Weiner, who's been here for the duration, who was actually the closest thing I've ever met, the closest person I've ever met in life, who's actually like Nick, the character in the movie. Funny that they're both named Nick, but he was a relief worker in Ethiopia. But he's a man who truly uh, has spent a large part of his life doing the things that you know I'm pretending to do in this movie. The business of, of suffering is, is interesting because the suffering always seems to happen with an extraordinary amount of dignity and the nobility with which people carried themselves in this situation was to me the, the truly remarkable thing and in some ways the nobility of their suffering buoyed us up as well and kept us as relief workers going. While researching her role for Beyond Borders, Angelina was to come into contact with the United Nations High Commission for Refugees, an organization set up to support and protect refugees worldwide. Their work has since become a significant part of her life. I mean, what Angelina has done in her personal life because of coming in contact with this film is profound. It's profound how it's changed people's lives and how she's changed people's lives. And I didn't plan to, really, um, but this film was almost put together about a year ago, or two years ago, a year after I read it. It was almost put together. And I was so excited to do it, and I had been getting information, I'd been learning, and I was so, I started to get really involved in, uh, in everything that this film's about. But um, I was, was very much driven by the film initially to, to start working in my own, in my life. And then, and then started traveling to refugee camps, and, and um, okay, so Africa was the first camp I went to, and it's the first camp she goes to, which is strange now. And you've met Nick, who's our team leader and full-time doctor. And um, I always thought that there was something very romantic about the idea of having a love story set against the backdrop of humanitarian work. And um, after doing some research, I wrote a few pages uh, that outlined what the story ultimately became. And originally we cast Catherine Zeta-Jones and uh, Kevin Costner in the leads. And then we uh, went to Meg Ryan. And all along, Angelina had heard about the script. And this is prior to her being in Tomb Raider. So uh, the studio at that point wasn't sure if she had the clout, you know, as an actress yet to, to be the lead in the movie. So it's quite clearly got a terrific drive to it, you know, a terrific passion to it that to have hooked people. And people have quite clearly wanted to be involved with it. And um, even though it's had a rocky road to the screen, the truth is it's survived. And, 
and uh, we're shooting a subject which I think normally no studio would touch. And I looked at it and of course the, the heart starts pumping. You say, well, how can I do this movie? How can we possibly pull this off? And especially with the sort of relatively limited budget uh, that we had. But uh, the excitement of saying, how can we film this was, uh, was something which uh, was an, an immediate challenge. Having built a full-scale set, the production's next challenge would be how to portray the reality and human scale of camp life. On any given day, we could be joined on set by up to 2,000 extras. We're loading in all the groups of extras. We've got the A group, the B group, the C group. We've got a new group today called the D group. We've got 2,000 extras working today. Basically, the way it works is as they land in the bus turnout area, they go through a tent system, male on one side, female on the other side. They actually have an assigned costume and number, which was done in the pre-fits in the rehearsal period. And uh, they change into their costume. They then come out the other end of the tent straight up to holding. And when we were prepping and we were doing our uh, open casting calls, one day we called for 400 and almost 2,000 people showed up. So there's a lot of people that want to work in the town. They're just mentioning different names. Hans get ready, John Luke get ready, Bjorn Boda get ready. So, I mean, the song is cool and we are enjoying because it's giving us that courage to be ready for the job, to be cool and to be fresh, you know. <laughs> Thank you very much. As you can see down below, we've got about 2,000 people in there now. Uh, there's about five ADs working now and we're controlling each different section of the camp that we're putting in the extras. We're about to do a crane shot with Angelina, and it's where she first comes up to the she comes up the rise and she sees the camp for the first time. So when I cue you, you pan onto the camp and action. And that's what she sees. <laughs> So here we are in Namibia for the first trip that Sarah takes on her entry into relief aid and where she meets the doctor, her co-star Clive Owen for the first time, who is working here in the refugee camp which is built behind me. The whole point about this first trip is that it shakes her out of her middle class suburban life into the realities of relief aid in a country which is short of water and short of food and short of vegetation. So the whole point of this part of the scene is that it should be arid, it should be dry, it should be parched. So what I'm trying to do visually is uh, use some filtration to give a sort of brownish, warmish look. So again, it was a choice of stock uh, that made me choose uh, the stock I was using in order to give a softer effect in this situation.